All right. So it's been a very long time since I've uploaded anything. I've taken a long break on uh, well coding in general, and came back to program my own game engine and of course batch files. Um, basically, it does pretty much an, the exact same thing the domination game does, except now it can as you can see here includes textures and vector graphics. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't do angles, it only does squares and lines. Uh, so, it messes with the, uh, it requires a lot of pre-calculation to do anything else than that. But, uh, anyways, and uh, some weapon animations and such, and all these files together make a little game. And I'll go through the logic of the game in a bit to show how to explain, or explain how it works to use because this this game engine will be available to download so you can make your own little first person shooter with it and so in the beginning you need to always enable enable delayed expansion because uh the game engine needs to have this so then uh now you just call your textures map oh yeah and this scan map you need to have that to yes if you're starting the game up by uh, the first time, or any new time you load a map, you need to have scan map to equals yes, because that what that does is the game loads in chunks. So like for vector graphics, it puts it in everything in five by five chunks before you start the game. So, or else it'll just screw up the entire thing if you don't do that for every map that you load up. But after that, you can just load it once, and then it'll all be fine. But uh, it'll only do that for vectors, so you can have, let's say, let's look at the readme here that comes with the download. Um, you can see you can set objects over here. You can set, like, object coordinates, object block identifier, and then, of course, if for the block identifier, you can set it if you want it to have a texture or not. So you can say, uh, the texture identifier would say it would be that. And the object, of course, would be that. So that means you can have texture transparent, so you can make a transparent texture. And I'll just show how to make these textures here. So you have your maximum textures. And let's say this texture 1 here is a wall. And then texture 1, x coordinate 1, y coordinate 1 is that. And it does explain texture coordinates here. It doesn't scale properly because it can, doesn't you can't use decimals in batch, so anything smaller won't scale properly, but anything bigger will scale properly. Uh, so yeah, 10 by 14 is the texture size that I, fit, I found that would work the best. Anything smaller might not scale properly. Yeah. All right, anyways, let's go on to the game here. And the first load up takes a while, but uh, yeah, we can see here there is a uh, kind of like a wooden plank wall around here, and a backpack here. And when I pick over the when I walk over this backpack, it gives me a gun. So now I have this gun here, and then this uh, zombie in front of me here. And then if I walk in front of him, or if I just walk anywhere, then uh, he'll take damage. I'll take damage. See, I now have two life. So I can fire my gun at him. And kill him. Now I can look over to the left. And there's actually some tree lines there. So these are some trees from far away. And I can get closer to the trees. And they look more and more detailed the closer I get. So there's some detailed trees. I can shoot at them. They do nothing, of course. So I can go back. More trees. And it is loading a little bit slow because, of course, you actually need... This is doing textures, and it also uses transparent items now. And this up front here is actually a door. So I can go to this door here. And you can kind of see the door handle kind of thing. Now I can press R, and I can open this door. 
and now the door is gone. Now I can go through here. And there's this, that's kind of like a messed up zombie kind of thing. And if I let him kill me here, if I just walk over here, and then if I let him kill me right here, then you can see my height actually, this, this is called the height variable, where it changes the height of the screen to make it look like you guys on the floor now. So everything looks a little bit raised up. You can also do this if you're doing like a role-playing game. You can do, uh, for like, a, let's say an elf character would be super tall, or a dwarf character would see everything like this. Just th small details like that. Of course, you can add multiplayer code, but this game engine doesn't have any pre-coded multiplayer stuff. So that's all up to you. Um, you can look at some domination files if you want to know how to do that. It's pretty complicated to do in batch files, but uh, yeah. And but yeah, this um, altogether this is yeah uh, about forty kilobytes. Um, the game engine is quite a bit, and uh, you can also make your own texture editor. I think I made my own, like, uh, yeah, I didn't type this up manually, this would take forever. Um, make your own texture editor that would just do a 10 by 14 screen, let's say, and it would just allow you to place objects down, and it would put it out accordingly, too. See, this is texture 2, and this N would just be transparent, like, so this is transparent, 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 and then... I have other things. I think this is the tree. Yeah, I think this is... I don't know what that is. Yeah, anyways. Alright, that's everything.